with mac and cheese. You need to start talking. I went to the lot to give haircuts to the men there. Annie came with me one time. And what happened that one time? <laughs> Annie and Ray hit it off. They talked all night. She showed him her tattoo. Love at first sight. Fixated on it. Oh, it's a bad word. This one? Yeah. Do you know what it means? She dreamt it. She got the tattoo, the dream stopped. Dreamt it. She didn't want anybody to know they were together. Why not? You could have told me back then. I was terrified. Plus, I was seeing a guy from Salal. All over Tagak. He was the equipment engineer. He left right before Annie died. He left right before she died? Do you know where we could find this, Oliver? I don't think he's looking to be found. After they found her, I did call the police. Who'd you talk to? Friar, where's your dad? Over. He's Hank? That son of a bitch takes me off the case. It's the fucking mind behind it. The mind. You know I'm right. And what about the men on the ice? Why'd they go out there? Oh, don't give me that. Voodoo. Right, there's a, there's a real explanation for this. Yeah, well, is there? I'm listening. We're we'll just not asking the right questions. We'll get to it. Episode 6. You gotta wait for episode 6. What do you do when you're lonely? I watch Netflix. <laughs> Come on. For real, what do you do? Well, she's seen that guy. I Sp pray. SpongeBob. SpongeBob. <laughs> you pray? You kidding me? You talk to God. I wouldn't make fun of it. No. I listen. Oh, jeez. Are we just gonna leave it there? Don't leave it there. Because, like, remember when... Is her name Rose? Ghost lady? She said she knew all about the symbol? And then we just let her leave? Without telling us anything about it? Oh, it's old. What are you talking about? That's not... What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> How is that helpful? It's not helpful. Anyway, this scene is still going. So I... I paused it for no reason. I pray. I listen. To the wind. So yeah, Jody Liz thinks there's going to be a, an absolutely 100% scientific, natural explanation for everything that's happened. Navarro's not so sure. She's more thinking maybe something mystical, maybe something not quite explainable uh, and maybe at the end of it we'll get something that satisfies both of them that leaves it open to both interpretations or maybe they'll come down hard on one side or the other let's not forget that we have personally the audience seen a ghost man through the eyes of somebody else but we still saw him And someone was throwing oranges back at her. You know? A reindeer? Get this feeling like that sometimes you just want to just disappear. Just walk out. No, oh, jeez. Never stop. That's dark. Hey. Run to? Danvers wants you to she call. She can wait. Oh, look at all the bodies. They're starting to smell. Apologize. I was cleaning out the garage and I found these. Yeah, I know Darwin's only four, but uh, you were already a pretty damn good little skater by that age, so take him out and shoot me a text. Huh? You received a direct call about Annie Kay's and Raymond Clark's relationship. That woman was sleeping with half of Ennis. Ooh. What do you want me to do? Like Liz. I swear to God, he's gonna no, join no, your no, boys no. over here. Calm <laughs> the fuck down. You go back to your fucking search. I don't shoot him. You're getting a negligence report for your mishandling of the Kotak case. Yeah, I had to file a report on you for playing Mrs. Robinson with my kid. Hmm? Hey. Yeah. You do your fucking job. Well, it's not getting any getting any easier. The relationships in these That's this it. Time. That's all he gets. We got more important hey, things. Where are you to, going? Fuck out of here. She has to blow off some steam. She has to blow Who's off some Mrs. steam. Mrs. Robinson. Not like the guys in the last episode. She has a legitimate reason. And she's doing it on her own time. She's not messing about. She's not taking a photograph with the bodies. 
right now and saying, oh, I need to blow off some steam, so I'm going to mess around with these bodies for a while. You don't mind that, do you? She's doing it the normal way. <laughs> Storming off. Punching something out of sight. <laughs> Here's to you, Mrs. Robinson. Something, 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 something. And... Isn't that right, Peter? Where's my forensic tech? There's a blizzard out in North Bay. Of course there is. I'm gonna thaw. I'm getting shipped out to Anchorage. Well, I have an idea. I don't know if you're gonna like it. we will freeze him again. My cousin lives in White Lake. He's a vet. A vet? How long before you can get him here? Pickers can't be choosers. Well, I can call him right now and see. Yeah. Yeah? He's a good kid. He's a good kid. I wouldn't stand for those insinuations from Hank. Uh, the brightness of civilization, the darkness of the empty void. Where did... where is she going? Who lives here? Come back! What the hell? Fucker. Oh, ice fishing? Yeah. Oh, it's one of these places from Fargo. One of these things from Fargo. Ice hut places. Right? I was only told about these a few weeks ago. Because we were, we were in one. And now we're in another one. That's kind of cool. Do you know Oliver Tagak? Tagak? I know you know someone who knows someone. You'll ask around? For a price? It's called quid pro quo. Oh! You tell me. Quid pro quo! I, I know it's not Jodie Foster, but... You know, it's, it is a reference. You tell me something about yourself. Fuck you, Cobbett. Come on, play his game. Always lovely to see you, Evangeline. She'll be back. He just wants to get to know you a little better. She came back. The fuck you wanna know? Your mom. Tell me about her. He wants to deal with her mom. Yeah. You could see things. Dad was bad. He hit her. Us too. No, she. So mom took us and ran. She definitely shot that guy. And then she was not okay. Like Jules? Worse? Yeah. And one day she ran out and never came back. And she, she was killed. The fucker was never found. Wow. She never told me my Nupiak name. I wish... Anyways... Hey, she opened up to him. There's like your that. intel. Yeah, he appreciates that. That was, that was a nice scene. Girlfriend. Huh? Here we go. Yeah, the, the water's being poisoned. That damn mine. There's a lot of people here. Oh, you're the chief of police's daughter, are you? Anybody who cares is welcome here. A white noise to help her focus? That's interesting. I have it to help me sleep because I live with people who are differently timed. Have you been hanging out with those people that are vandalizing the mine? No. Are you insane? We were Do you here know before. what happens to those people? Well, she's listening to the wind, the ice. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey! Oh, nice, we're back here. With the half brain woman. Is that Liz's child? It's a lot of trippy stuff that just happened. It's Kenny Hogan. It's the your sister, Julia. She started screaming that someone was coming. Who does she think is coming? Where is she? Just ran out. Is it a lady in the ice? Is she gonna start writing things? What is this, a Titanic? I know, the world's smallest Titanic. <laughs> I wanna see what she sees. Hear what she hears. Navarro sees enough for both of them. Oh yeah, isn't that interesting? She has these visions that she doesn't tell anybody about. 
Your sister is the crazy one, but she also has something of her mother's inside her. You know, you can you can argue it that way. Uh, whether or not there is something or not. Um, yeah. Oh, stealthy dude. Hey, buddy. Did you make any weird drawings today? I'm sorry. Come to bed? I have an exam at seven. Might as well stay up. At seven? What kind of a time to have an exam is that? You will just set it for 7 a.m. Your son never comes up anyway. And, and Danvers will still be calling day and night, Pete. She's his boss. And you'll run every time. D yeah. Every time. It's the job. They'll work it out. It's just Danvers. I just gotta go again. It's this case. Anyway, she's an exam. He's better off out of here, right? Day six. Yeah. Yeah, when we're we gonna have that exam? 7 a.m. on December 23rd. The best time for it. You know, before the holidays? Jesus. Jesus, Pete. That's what I said. Hey, you think that guy scratched his own eyes out? Oh, this is the bet. Vince, tell her. Yeah. I, I think they died before they froze. This is not how you die in the cold. Did they die of fright? It's just not. What killed them? Heart attack? Hard to tell without a chance to properly post more of them. But looks like cardiac arrest if I had to put my... Hey, I could be a vet. The thing is, they're all frozen in like... You know? As if something was literally happening to them immediately and they died immediately. You know, they didn't shiver to death. You know? heart attack is like getting frozen in time I don't know I don't know it it, it seems sudden and all of them at once in the same place oh I really hope this is explained you know and at the end of the show I'm not going well because <laughs> it's interesting I just can't imagine it. Apart from seeing Cthulhu, you know, arise from the ice. Yeah, Cthulhu. You, you go get him, dog. Good luck. Good luck with that. I found him. He's living in a nomad camp on the North Shore. Nomad camp. Let's go. Not everything is on a computer, freshman. How old do you think this guy is, by the way? Everybody's treating him like he's 17. Oh, this is the nomad camp? Do they bring the camp with them when they're wandering? Presume, presume so. Can't build, bring that building. Mr. Tagak is not a suspect, we just need to chat with him. I mean, he could be a suspect. Not sure he's around. He's not not a suspect. Let's have a look at his trailer first. <laughs> oh, hey, uh, hey. You're standing on traditional back territory. He's got a shotgun. I'll blow your brains out. That's a bit drastic, isn't it? I hear you. You. What's your name? I'm A.T. Evangeline Navarro. Kenya Atkin. Hey, we, she, Who are you? She wasn't given a name. You forgot, didn't you? And her mother never told her. About your ex-colleagues. They're dead. Yeah, something spooked him. Real good. They died on the ice. Lund is dead? No. no. He's in the hospital. If there's anything you know... Get the hell out of my house! No. Hola, get out of here! Uh, out. Placing you under arrest for threatening an officer? We'll be on our way. There's all that shit about your name. You wouldn't understand. Danvers! Yeah, you wouldn't understand. It's a, it's a, it's a tribal thing. You've never seen any movies or anything. It's beyond your comprehension. <laughs> she could just explain it to her. It's just to maintain the mystical the mystical nature of it. Anything that isn't exactly 100%, you know, normalized American 
with some mystical, you know, magical stuff that's unknowable. Hey, look, it works for this show. <laughs> it's a little, there's something about this, something about it that's a little disrespectful, the way they treat it. I know it doesn't seem that way. It seems like they're do, they're being very respectful. There's certain there's a certain I can't quite verbalize it. It's a tiny bit. There's something wrong with it. Just a tiny bit. We got a call from the hospital. Uh, Is he awake? Will he know what he saw? Will he be muttering gibberish? Will he be screaming about his legs being gone? Kept him heavily sedated, but a few hours ago he started waking up. Is he communicating? What's he saying? Agitated. Be prepared. He's. I hear him. He's still screaming. Tell us anything. Say any word. My name is Elizabeth Danvers. <clears throat> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. What happened that night out on the ice? Oi, Walker. Walker, who? She's out there in the ice. Who? She came for us. Who? That's over again. Anders! There's been an accident on the police search. What's happening out here? What the hell? Is he gonna say something to her? She's listening. Hello. Hello, What a deep voice you've got. You're not my grandma. Your mother says hello. She's waiting for you. That's pretty creepy. Go back to screaming, dude. He's coding. That was just in her head, though. That was just in her head. That didn't happen. That's the scientific explanation for that scene. What's up? Annie's phone. Oh, you hacked it. Cracked it. How? <laughs> I found it. It's here. I found it. What? What did you find? Happens, yeah, we, we could have done without your name. Could have done without the intro. If I was you, I'd run. Oh, I'm way ahead of you. I, <laughs> I know, a dramatic ending. Uh, <laughs> there's something in TV. There's a rule. An unwritten rule. It's in the start of movies too, where you can't reveal any answers. You have to you have to be vague, as vague as possible, and that leads to certain scenes having to play out the way they play out. Like it, like that that one right at the end where we, I love the way we cracked into her phone. You know, using youth. <laughs> You're under thirty. You. Surely you can hack this cryptographic cipher. <laughs> I've forgotten now. I used to be under 30, but, uh, you know, back back in when the Matrix was around. But I've, I've lost all those cracking skills. Only the youth of today will understand. Anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, the whole... My name is Annie. If If, if anybody finds this phone... You don't be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll get right to the pertinent information just in a second. Wait a second. And I also want to shout out to our sponsor, Pepsi. Pepsi is the sponsor of this episode. It was, by the way. And uh, oh yeah, the thing I need to tell you is, rah! you know. And the same with the guy without the legs. He didn't tell us anything. He told us everything. If you had pointed a gun at my head and asked me, what will he say? I would have said pretty much what he said, you know? That, you know, we woke her, she's out there, you know, everything that was scrawled on the the crazy writing. That's He just repeated that and gave us no extra information. He didn't say, Clark killed us. It was Clark. He didn't say that. He didn't say, it's a monster, a giant, huge monster, it looks like a unicorn. He didn't say anything like that. As vague as possible. Anyway, look, I like this episode. 
it sounds like I'm starting on a, a negative talking about that stuff. It's just funny. It's funny because it's episode three into six episodes and we're not allowed to know anything. You know? So it's a little, as a viewer, it, you're like, just tell us something. Give us something extra. We don't quite get it. And we didn't quite get that in the whole episode, really. We didn't really get anything extra. The vet thinks that they died of a heart attack. It looked that way. That they were scared to death. Uh, that they died, they didn't freeze to death. That they were dead before they froze. Although I'd like to see how it happened. I'd like, I'd like, because I don't understand. I don't understand it. You know? How they're in that mound of ice. All kind of arranged weirdly near each other, but not quite near each other. And You know? I don't know how it's physically possible. Like, I can imagine them all dying of heart attacks, but then they'll all be lying down on the ice, right? Side by side, at the same level. Or physically connected to each other on top of each other. Not not disconnected and kind of half-posed and, you know? It was almost like they were frozen in time, you know? At a moment, like a mannequin's, and instantly in the ice, with no time in between for gravity to do anything. And I don't know how they got stuck in there. Like I don't I don't understand that either. You know, like a, a blizzard blew in really quickly and, and they got buried. Anywho. Yeah, the guy woke up and now he's dead. We learned what happened between Liz and Navarro, what drove them apart. I suspect that Navarro shot that man because he was goading. He just killed. He was been, been abusing that girl, that woman. Was she eighteen? For months, beating her up, and then he killed her, and now he's laughing in their faces, more or less. And you have a gun pointed at his head. You pull the trigger, right? One of them pulls the trigger. I think Navarro pulled the trigger. It makes more sense for her to pull the trigger and for if if Danvers pulled the trigger I, I, I don't know how she would still be in I, I feel like it makes more sense the other way around Navarro to do it but it could it could have been the other way plus Navarro has the history the backstory of her mother and all that stuff you know she has history with that, that sort of thing anyway that's I'm gonna think of it that way until we see it play out properly in reality. We learned that Hank he didn't he didn't cover up everything that happened in with the Annie case, but he did he did cover up some aspects of it. You know, he didn't he, he didn't do his due diligence. He wasn't all over that case at the time, and maybe that's. We could explain that as why he was keeping those files and he didn't want those files released. Because he knew he had not done a great job on that. You know, it couldn't. It might not be that he was personally attached to it. It could just be that he was covering his ass. Maybe he got orders from higher up. You know? Christopher Eccleston, that sort of thing. Or, or whatever, you know? We had a nice... A nice fishing scene. I like that. We got to know her a bit, her a bit better. We got to know more about what she believes in, her history. In the car, we learned that she prays, she listens. And, hey, we found that guy. The guy we were looking for, right? The guy we were looking for that may know the who used to work up there and he had a gun and he didn't want to talk to us the end I presume he will eventually tell us something otherwise his character is not is pointless so he will be in it again and he'll tell us something maybe next episode he'll be like ah I like that one guy that I worked with up there so let me tell you about Clark 
or about what they were researching. You know? She's awake. Who do you think they mean by... Like, do you think it's a person, is my question. Do you think they're talking about a woman? Or do you think they're talking about the Earth? You know, the Earth as an organism itself? Or a monster? Or something metaphysical? I'm not so sure. It, it doesn't seem like it's a woman. My brain doesn't... I can't... You know? A zombie? They brought somebody back from the dead. They brought Annie back from the dead. I don't know. And why did that guy, you know, the uh, clerk, who who was doing all that, how did he suddenly realize it? Did he get a text message? Did he feel it? Is it like Navarro? He suddenly has a vision? She's having, she's coming in and out of visions all the time. Where she's hearing things, she's seeing things that aren't actually happening. Or that are happening on a different plane of... They're happening on a supernatural plane. There's two planes. There's reality that Liz always sees and never sees anything else. Our plane, our normal plane of existence. And then there's this other plane that if you're listening hard enough and you know how to tap into it, and you got that genetic gene and you're from Ennis, you can see this other plane of reality where all sorts of spooky things happen and people are giving messages from dead loved ones and they're pointing the way and they're giving a prophecy and they're, you know, it's very all very mystical. And you can either believe that that actually exists or that there's some sort of mass psychological damage up north of the Arctic Circle that a lot of people have. And my theory is that we're going to leave it open-ended as to which to believe at the end of the season. And I think that's okay as well, to leave it that way. I don't think we need it confirmed either way. Although I want to know why they died, how they died. I want to know what was so horrific that they all had heart attacks at the same time. They were so scared about something. Maybe it was that mass hallucination. Some sort of accidental gas release that sent them into a hallucinatory... They all had some... They were all dosed with some sort of mushroom. And they all ran outside and mass hallucinated something and all died. The end! And Clark didn't take any of that stuff. He was freaked out by it. He was like, I don't know why they all ran out. You know? It was crazy, some crazy shit. And when I said she's alive, I was just rehearsing a play. So you don't have to ask any more questions about that. <laughs> Mrs. Robinson. It's not that, it's not... Those two, I like those two working together. You know? She's his boss. It is this, just this one case. If I was the, the wife in the situation, I wouldn't be... I'd be just getting on with it for a while. Although it seems like it's not just this case that it's been going on for a long time. And that his life has been dominated by his work. And Danvers is taking advantage of him by always assuming he's going to be there any time, day or night, to do whatever she wants. She needs to step back and not do that. She needs to realize that he's her biggest asset and she shouldn't push it too much. Or he will no longer be that asset in future. Anyway, I like this episode. We didn't learn anything, but we learned we learned we did learn something. We learned about why Navarro and Danvers are, fell out, and it wasn't anything too bad. It was over murder, but it wasn't too bad, you know. If you're gonna fall out over murder, better to be somebody like that than somebody else. That is my view of things. Come back for episode four next time. We'll have a great time. We'll have we'll have some fun with the show. We'll spot some goofy things. We'll have some pauses to chat. And we'll analyze the show seriously at the end. 
the usual style. Have a great day. Don't go into the ice. What did I tell you about going into the ice? And I'll see you next week.